It's Friday, July 7th, 2023, and this is the Washington Times front page. Thanks for joining us. I'm George Gerbo. Activists are challenging the expansion of Election Day into a full election season. The immediate target is North Dakota, Stephen Dynan reports, which counts ballots received nearly two weeks after Election Day. The broader target is the sense that the country has moved beyond the concept of a single day for deciding elections. North Dakota's law requires mail ballots to be filled out and postmarked the day before the election, though the lawsuit claims they can be counted if they're received before county canvassing boards meet. That date is 13 days after Election Day. The Biden administration's attempt to redesign the citizenship test is being criticized by immigrant rights activists. Sean Salai reports U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services is testing an English section that requires applicants to describe pictures and a multiple-choice format for the civics questions. The agency wants the updates in place next year if all goes well. Immigrant rights activists say they expect immigrants to struggle with the new requirements. The goal of the test is to ensure applicants have a good grasp of American history, how the government operates, and a working knowledge of English. The man who led the lawsuit that upended race-based affirmative action policies at colleges says schools can't try to find a workaround by asking about race or ethnicity in admission essays. Edward Blum told our Alex Sawyer that he read the Supreme Court's ruling last week to mean that schools cannot even ask about race. That includes eliminating race and ethnicity checkboxes on applications. He said he would watch how schools comply with the ruling and use open records requests to obtain public schools' admission data. His group, Students for Fair Admission, was behind the lawsuit against Harvard and North Carolina. Former President Trump's legal team has claimed the government's classified documents case against him is political. Jeff Mordock and Alex Sawyer report Trump has repeatedly fumed about what he says is unequal treatment from the Department of Justice in the case. His legal team likely wants to draw a comparison with other high-profile politicians who seem to get a pass for similar transgressions. Trump faces 37 criminal charges, including 31 alleging he withheld national defense information. He's also charged with concealing the possession of classified documents and making false statements. And finally, Saturday marks a year since Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe was assassinated, and the anniversary is sparking reflections and a realization that Abe's legacy is likely to endure in a country that doesn't offer its political leaders lasting fame. Ben Wolfgang reports Abe's career brought a sea change in Japan's domestic policies and national security posture while helping resurrect Tokyo as a significant power player on the world stage. Analysts say Abe's legacy is one of bringing his nation to the forefront of international politics. Find all of today's Trump page stories at WashingtonTimes.com slash Trump page or on the Washington Times app and find us wherever you get your podcasts. Just search Washington Times in any major podcast app. You can also find us on Twitter and Instagram at Watch Times for breaking news, sports, commentary, and more. For the Washington Times, I'm George Gerber.